Hi there, welcome to the RPS project. Today I'm going to be looking at the, well one of these, it's a CD4093 which is a quad two input NAND gate with Schmidt trigger inputs. So what's that mean? Well it's got Schmidt trigger inputs. It's a NAND gate basically but with a inputs that can cope with a maybe an unstable input I suppose I'm not quite sure how we'd use that or what it'd be used in but um, but yeah it's got that uh, um, instead of just having um, a voltage that's logic high or a voltage that's logic low it has a Schmidt trigger input which means we can make use of uh, a varying input I suppose so something to have a look at um, we're going to have a look on the uh, on the breadboard uh, see how it actually works, but let's start with the whiteboard and uh, have a quick look at the um, at the actual IC um, layout and the uh, the circuit that I'm going to be using. Okay, so we've got the uh, whiteboard marked up, well drawn up with the actual IC. It's a CD4093 um, quad two input NAND Schmidt trigger. I put that symbol on here because actually that's the sort of symbol they tend to put on these things for showing that it has a Schmidt trigger um, circuitry inside them. You've got four of them per IC, two inputs, one output per unit, as it says, it's a two input quad, four of them. Um, Labelling is standard again uh, that you'll get on all these type of ICs the inputs labeled first A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and then the outputs J, K, L, M, V, D, D on pin 14 BSS ground on pin 7 I'm going to be using 9 volts let's just put that on that On my input so uh, nice and simple what is the IC that's what you get in one package I'm just gonna change this um, draw up the actual circuit that we're going to be using so we can have a quick look at what we're going to be doing so this is the actual circuit I'm going to be using to uh, uh, test out the um, two input NAND Schmidt trigger um, IC or at least one of those because there's four on an IC um, so this is what I've got. I've got the actual logic gate itself with the little Schmidt trigger um, symbol in there. Uh, two inputs. Now the inputs are basically from two pots uh, and I'm going to put a multimeter across the pots so we can see the voltage um, uh, go up and down so we can see the points at when this is supposed to be uh, going on and off. Um, and both inputs have to be effectively high for this to go off because obviously being a NAND gate when there's no inputs this will be giving an output so just a basic LED nothing buffering doesn't need a resistor in there or anything um, all these ICs have sort of buffered inputs and outputs so you know they're fairly stable really um, quite easy to, to use with their minimal uh, component setup um, let me just get my marker what I've also got is when I was looking at this is that it's saying on data sheet that the trigger points for the Schmidt trigger inputs is a high for it to detect for it to detect that it's gone high that's it it has to get to um, plus I think it's about 5.9 if your source input source voltage is about 9 volts so it's about 10 volts sorry so we're at 9 volts so it's not too far off that but so I have to have plus for it to be counted as a high right and let's just draw it like this so it's counted as a as a high when it's at 5.9 and it's counted as a low so it's at about 3.9 so so yeah, so hopefully you could see that on there. We've gone from it showing us as an input of low 
At 5.9 it'll now take that as being a high input and at 3.9 it'll then say okay I'm now taking that to be a low input. So both inputs have to get to 3.9 first before it says okay I've got two highs and turns off the output. But either one of these inputs now has to drop below about 3.9 volts before it detects that as being a low voltage and then when one or the other or both fall below that voltage well it's actually one or the other isn't it because it's a NAND so that will then go high again so that is the circuit I've got so I'm going to be using the um, resistor capacitor here again is just to tie that that input to ground just to make it stable like I've said on previous videos I leave them on there for the inputs on these logic circuits because they just seem to work better and stay stable on the input with that on there. So that's the circuit I'm going to be using. Let's get it set up and have a look at that. OK, so here we have it on the breadboard. Um, little IC. A um, couple of pots. Now, the way I've wired these pots in is just basically center point over to the input voltage coming in and ground so you know across the pot I've left the um, the resistor capacitor to um, help stabilize that uh, that input I always do that on these because it just seems to work better with it LED output and now these pots so actually this pot is um, input one and this part is input two and we've got a couple of multimeters so I can see the voltages as it goes up on the input so we can see where it actually triggers from now let's turn it on and as this is a NAND gate with Smith trigger because it's a NAND when we've got no inputs um, or the inputs are technically low then uh, zero volts then we get an output so let's start by turning up the um oh, can i do this hopefully you'll see the reading on this one because i'll turn this one up first now as i said the supposed input trigger on about 10 volts is uh, 5.9 volts so um but this being a nand means that i've got to have both of them at about that point with a 9 volt input I'm expecting it to be around about that point so I'm going to take this voltage up to 5 points or let's just leave it there and see what happens and I'm going to turn up the other input should be shown on this meter and we'll get to see hopefully the uh, the voltage level at which this activates I can get it to work. There we go. Slowly turning that up. And at some point, the blue LED will go off. Four, five, five point three, four, five, six, seven, uh, nine. Five point nine. So yeah, it's about five point nine. Now, as this is a Schmidt trigger, it means that. It now won't turn off until really we've got the um, the inputs now go below I think it's uh, is it 4.9 3.9 I think it's 3.9 so one of these inputs has to now drop below the um, 3.9 so let's turn this one down and see at what point the LED comes back on because at the moment we've got both inputs to high. And we get down to 3.8 about just under. Before that triggered and said, you know, that basically the, um, the input on this, on input two is now low. So because I don't have both inputs high, um, it counts as the... Uh, uh, a false doesn't it you know because it's 
and gate both have got to be in NAND means it's inverted so with one of the inputs high but with the other input now low enough below the Schmidt trigger uh, point it now counts it as a low and again if we turn that back up it's going to be again around about 5.9 6 volts to um before it actually counts it as a uh, as a high again 5.6 5.7 yeah about 5.9 so there we go and it goes off again now it's considered that both um, inputs are now counted as high and the output goes off that's brilliant that's that exactly what I wanted to do so there you have it the CD4093 quad 2 input NAND Schmidt trigger um, IC uh, simple device very simple to set up I mean there's uh, I suppose quite a lot of scope for thinking how it can be used in a circuit especially maybe if you've got something where that's not a stable input or you've got a changing input and you want to be sure you're getting an output or not in the case of a NAND gate so yeah, nice and simple. And what can I say about it? Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Subscribe and all comments are welcome. See you next time.